Welcome. The wait is finally over and we have Android 11 running on the Xperia 1 Mark II. There are many cool new camera features that I'll be covering over multiple videos. But in this one, I want to talk about the External Monitor app. It lets us use the Xperia as an external monitor for connected cameras. Let's take a closer look. To enable the external monitor app, all you have to do is go into device connections, connection preferences, and if you scroll down, you'll see an option for external monitor. Just make sure that's turned on. And when we do that, you'll have the app available to you, which looks like this. This has external monitor. If you tap on it, it'll give you a nice little tutorial on how it works. So let's connect it to a camera. And it's worth noting that there's a lot of confusion on how this actually works. There's actually two ways to connect a camera to this app, and we're going to go over both of them right now. So the first one is to use the camera's HDMI output to a capture card. For this test, we're going to use my handy Sony ZV-1. And the first way to connect is to use the HDMI port, which is on the bottom on the ZV-1 here. And we will connect that to an HDMI cable which goes here. And then on the other end, we're gonna to have to convert the HDMI signal to USB. And the obvious answer there is to use a capture card, like this CamLink 4K that I have here. So we'll go ahead and connect that to the bottom. There's obviously cheaper options for capture cards as well. And you'll see that it turns on. And if I turn the camera on now, you will see what's going to happen. And if I just hit next on this, there's our feed. So if I move the camera around, you can see this is live and it works pretty well. So right now the app is hiding all the controls. Uh, all we have to do is touch the screen to show them. On the top left, we can see the display, which is showing us as a 4K image, uh, which makes sense because I'm using a 4K capture card. Obviously, if you're using something different, the output will be different. On the right, we have options to you know, lock the controls or we can change the brightness of the display. Uh, we have the grid that's showing um, as well as an option to add frame lines. Uh, we can rotate the image. And at the bottom here, we have some settings. Uh, the main ones you're gonna wanna probably change are some of the zoom indicator ones. And the way that works is all you have to do is just kind of zoom in as you would expect. And then we have a preview in the bottom left of kind of the overall image and we can just kind of pan around and this is great for just getting critical focus when using this external monitor it works pretty well now what if i told you i don't think this is the experience sony was going for i don't think they expected everyone to be using you know expensive capture cards like this just to get an external monitor display so let's take a look at a better option some of you might know that the ZV-1 recently got a firmware update to version 2.0. And one of the most interesting features is this USB streaming option on movie page four. And if we look at the details of the firmware, they even mention the Xperia 1 Mark II and 5 Mark II for this option. So how is USB streaming different from what we just did? Well, the difference is this. All we need is a single cable. This is a micro USB to USB-C cable. No capture card or anything else. Now to make this work, the first thing we have to do is enable USB streaming on the ZV-1. So if we go ahead to the menu options, we see USB streaming and I select it here to enable it. And you can see that it tells us to go ahead and connect a USB cable. So now we will go ahead and use the single cable here to test this out. So this is the USB-C side. And then the other end is the micro USB and that will connect to the ZV-1. So now we're using a different port altogether to make this connection. And there we go. There is the same preview like we saw before. You can see if I move the camera around, it is updating live like before. Uh, again, I didn't mention this before, but you can change the camera settings here if you want. So here I'm changing the the shutter speed. And like before, we can tap the screen to see our settings. And you'll immediately notice here, this is a lower resolution of 1280 by 720 using this USB connection. So it's not as great as what we got with the 4K capture card, 
but it's still useful and nice to have a larger display than what you would get with the back of the ZV-1. So overall, the external monitor app is quite impressive, and I'd expect this to be coming to more Sony cameras in the near future. It's nice to see Sony bridging the gap between connectivity of smartphone and camera. More videos are coming on the Android 11 update, including a close look at the 4K 120fps mode and how it compares to the competition. If that sounds interesting to you, make sure you're subscribed and hit that bell icon if you want to be among the first to see them. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.